Alright, so first you get this sniper rifle from the asset store. And we get these sniper models here, as you can see. We'll drag one black URP one. And let's uh, unpack it, remove everything from it. Delete it, spare it, create a new parent for it and call it the model. Um, and then I'm going to delete the things which are irrelevant. So there was an empty which was useless. I'm going to actually make this position correctly. So 180 local, we can see where it's going. Right at that point, seems good. And just drag it as a child, all of those as child. So that's a sniper model create a new folder, I call it models, inside the sniper model need the bullet as there's no need and everything else change just go in models let's create another one called animation this is what we can actually be animating so slide handle I think will come useful in animation magazine yes, and barrels not but cylinders are not either we create a new folder, scope right, the scope, scopes and stuff the real piece slide everything else seems to be going in the animation this is the trigger it's also animation and then hinge hinge is model and rail as well so we have the model done now let's delete the useless stuff from here so basically cleaning stuff up so item job sniper clear everything and we have this left let's create a new folder awm drag the model in there now we have these textures that we need to put, so create a new folder, AWM Sniper, and drag in everything, except this, this can be deleted. Now this is the material we need to keep for this weapon, AWM Sniper material, we can drag this into the materials area, create a new folder, AWM Sniper, and just put it there. Now these uh, things we cannot delete we must store these as well so let's rename these all so this is the black this is also black all four of these are black textures for the black color of the sniper now we have these four these ones are for olive color I'm just going to set them up. and there you have the last one almost done and then for the final one it is sand color so we can go with sand not olive set them all to sand and then we can drag all of these textures straight in the same place with the rest of them now we can create this material all of your material or olive material and sand material then in the materials folders, the AW sniper, we can make this one the black material and just drag them all in there. Alright, so we just cleaned up everything, we can delete that. No need for that anymore. No pink or anything, everything's working. Alright, so we have the model done. Now we use our weapon creator. So let's go into the weapon creator window. Let's assign the weapon model. Let's set the name to be AWM weapon and hit create. So now it's created us our weapon we want rotation base as we will have to fix the stuff I'm sure there might be bugs in it so now I assign my animation and just create it so we got that now I'm not gonna actually want this window to create me a stupid object and I'm gonna duplicate the AK-47 one for that and just name it AWM alright now assign it into the script manually we can assign the mesh as if we need that and then we have this audio so whichever one makes sense to you you can just put that one here and now we need a muzzle flash to spawn we can just drag the prefab muzzle flash from the unity technologies particle effect pack and hit create on each of those create a magazine parent as well now all these are completely like I mean they are not positioned directly but that's okay we just add the impulse source, add box collider, add animator and this I'll set after a while now for the audio clip we can just add reload and for magging out, magging out 
swap AWM. So now I'm going to do some things. I call this scope parts because duplicating same names is not good. So front ring, and this is the actual main scope body. Save that out, drag it into the player, rifle holder, and reset the transform, so it's already done. Now we have this model, and we need to change the scale factor, so 0.6 now. That's because the person who modeled it didn't quite give the correct scaling to real world, I think. So that's why I'm going to reset this and look for a good scale. And as you can see, changing the scale actually just changed the position, which is not so nice. So let me just clean this up by taking out the mesh, taking out everything, and after that, making it 0.75. Now, if I drag this back in, I still have to align it manually, so this is not good. And I'm trying to move this to the right point. It's snapping. Didn't go perfect, so just so six. And now we can drag it back into the mesh and back to AWM. Save our project and see if it looks real world. It still looks quite big though. So yes, we can now align the hands and the actual rifle pivot point correctly by just changing slight stuff. Now let's see what happens. So right away we get this because we've not set the weapon. Now we set all the layers to weapon everything seems to work. And we can set to color the transformer always animate doesn't really matter I think and then duplicate uh, a weapon controller and make a new one for it animator controller there you have one done for us duplicate the AK47 folder of animations and just change the names for those as well and then assign them accordingly. Save our project again, and we can continue. So, as you can see, hands are not aligned, so I'm gonna have to align these on my own. And you could do that as well, I'm sure you guys should be able to do it, if you've been following along so long. So, I'm gonna go with 0.6 as the scale, right? And then directly after that, we need to change the models and animations positions because otherwise the pivots are out. So we can see the pivot point's not nice. I'm just going to have to do that to align the mesh correctly and the AWM weapon. That's done. Now you can see that we have quite a better looking gun. If we go to the SO, we can set the position of sets that are done in real time. And you can see we have the sniper kind of, kind of okay, maybe you can say. So the sniper's pivot is quite okay as well. We could actually make this much better by putting it correctly. So I want the pivot to be slightly there. There you are much better and everything seems to be working so what we will do now is make the position offset correctly done set the constraint offset y to 50 and just play around with this so that's what we're gonna do actually I'm gonna do it myself because maybe showing it to you guys will take a long time but I've done it already so many times so uh, you shouldn't have much problem in doing that on your own as well all right so now we're done with the position almost I think the weapon position offset should be something like that and you can see that it's quite simple to just align the hands using the psychic targeting And almost done.
Now in the AWM, we can just set the offsets again. So that is okay. And constraint offset, actually, I would like to change to something lower. But right now, we also want, I also want to make the heading rig, so do that to one. Mm, right, and the position offsets, see, can be changed. So I'm gonna align this, well, yeah, align the head, and just copy the component, paste the component values, and now I'll come back after I've actually done the hands IK positioning. Alright, so I'm back and my hands align perfectly with the weapon because I've actually just modified all of those. Alright, so we can also see the box collider is kind of out. So we just fix that by changing the box collider size bounds and aligning that correctly using these offsets and making it longer, shorter in height shorter in height would do so let me just make that smaller 0.37 there and the offsets as well we can make that smaller though because that's quite big so as you can see it does work 0.075 is also okay okay now we can go and set the recoil impulse source to custom if i would like to try out and see what happens no, that's not that great. If I do something like recoil, yeah, so you just use the default recoil and give a time of 0.5. I'm gonna be using it like a proper sniper, so every time it shoots, uh, I'll get it to like it have to load again. So that's animating, which we'll do in the next video, not even in this video, because we already got a lot of stuff to do. I'm just gonna make that small time so for our testing we can actually just shoot quicker. But otherwise we can set to one, so that's one, you can set it slow. Makes you wait. And you can set the range as a sniper would have much longer. The normal position as well for the camera and the aiming position. Are we gonna have to add an aim camera virtual one of cinema machine type? because this is actually not going to be enough for a complete sniper scope system and as we'll need a scope system as well at the same time okay so here i am now and i'm going to reset the transforms for the muzzle and the fire point all right now position it correctly so let's bring this upwards and a bit forwards that does make quite a bit of sense something like 0.4 to 0 0.101 on height paste the components the values there as well and onto the so I copy and then paste the muzzle flash the muzzle flash can be bigger change it on the y to 90 Okay, cool. It's like a jumbo muzzle flash effect. We could try four as well, and let's see how it looks. We can try five again. Set the core demos or something big so we can test about instead of having only five for now now that duration value does do something as you can see making it quicker don't need to enable looping start lifetime as well so those are changing the muscle flash behavior can see the magazines. 
it's time to add some events so weapon base can be interacting with other scripts using unity events. So I'm gonna go in weapon base script and below this message system I'm gonna add a space and a header. For now just DS, um, whatever it stands for. Call back events. We're gonna define a unity event and as we don't currently have it, it's gonna give us an error. We can just use unity engine.events and I don't know why we need to use that. That might be because of the uh, I think and constraint type actually defined. Let me just fix I'll fix that afterwards. Just define on shoot on a mentor and on aim exit. That's when we are no longer aiming. This is the error as you can see. The enum is defined there, so we just create a new script for that. And it's constraint type. I'm just gonna copy this or cut it and paste it here. That's it. No more errors. Now we have other types of errors because we have used weapon base here. And done. So we have nothing like that anymore. We've got three events set up already. Not currently currently called from anywhere. Just add a small space and mm, make it public. Public and public. And we want to invoke a uh, event on shoot. So shoot invoke it nothing else to invoke though we can add a listener if you want to don't need to we'll define another unity event call only it'll start and we can say okay dot invoke and that's literally the event done and then we have to finish off by well, for interactions we could also make an event for on interaction so public in the event on interaction invoke it and we got the event so that's all the web events kind of invoked except aim and on aim exit that's what's going to be done from the player controller script so let's go there and go to the weapon area in the handle aiming so if rather we check if his aiming is true if it is true current weapon dot on a mentor dot invoke and if it is not true want to invoke the other one okay cool and now let's add some events add a virtual camera as well First, we set everything to nothing. We have to uh, set the positioning. Well, we save our project first, and the event enters. We're just gonna enable and disable this camera. So, on event exit, we disable it on event exit and set the priority to 11. In the normal, we just can match them both, so aim is the same as normal. As you can see, everything does work. I have actually changed the default blend to east in and 0.3 okay so we just added an aim camera and not hard load to target as that doesn't work time for some scope rendering create a game object scope mechanics and just gonna drag that underneath it create a 3d object cylinder this is gonna be the scope renderer Basically, what the processor see, move the capsule quieter, rotate on the x by 90, and set it to 0.1 on all axes, scale, and just uh, align it with the aim camera, and then position it, scale it down to where it makes sense. Make it super small on the y x. Okay, and bring it to the edge. Something like 0 0.0037, 0 0.037. So there, there's our scope and 0 0.038, 0 0.038. And now we're gonna assign white as the image renderer. Uh, all this lit as the default one. So we just go with lit. Let's create a new game object and sorry camera. This is for the scope renderer camera. 
paste the five points position on it drag it ahead so it's showing only the forward part and as you can see the muzzle is extractive we can set this to 20 or 15 and restart the effect we have this coming at the screen no longer and now we'll assign a rendered texture but that's going to be done through a strip let's just enable fast approximates anti-aliasing and yep now we have a create a new strip so we just allow made a nice clean folders for the strip you can see that looks pretty neat so everything makes sense as well in the base place we're just going to make a new strip called the scope effects manage and we open it up let's start by defining a render texture private and then making a function called setup render texture and we also need a space on top a header for a camera we define the camera this is the render camera then uh just to load private game objects so this is sorry mesh renderers I'll just go with renderer, so renderer, scope renderer, and this is for the scope renderer, space as well. Now we can uh, remove this script, so just myself, add the new one, this one, and just assign the reference, disable the camera by default, and just call that and start and back in here, we'll come back to the code. Define a material as private as well, the render texture material. Render texture variables. This is camera. This is scope renderer. We're gonna say render texture equals new render texture, and we're gonna pass the two for five point two times five by two, and the depth. Uh, let's do that after creating. Uh, let me just create a render texture. Let's just have a look at how it looks. So as you can see, it goes with 256 now. That would be too low. We'll go with 256 as well. And then it's going with 8 units something. So can I actually do that as well? Mm, let's have a look. And if we add that, we just get an error because it has to be error. If you put the depth, 16. There's no longer an error though. <coughs> we can create the render texture. Initialize any render texture as there. This creates and sets up a render texture for the scopes. Alright. Now we will actually say render texture material equals to new material. So we now need to generate or, or create a new material. So define one as material to copy. I'm just going to instantiate an instance of that one. And then we're going to say debug.log render texture material to see if it actually does create or doesn't even create it. Scope materials, and uh, this folder we're just going to add scope based material. Right, and then it's going to be just white, nothing else. Uh, assign that directly. Let's uh, hit play and have a look. So, as you can see, we have a problem. And surely is that thing. We can just remove that. Save it and come back here. And we will not get the er error now. So as you can see, we just get a clone somewhere else instance. We don't know where though. So what we'll do is just pair it to our own self. And actually it's not gonna even show up in the hierarchy because material stones so they they won't can come so as you can see it's generated a material somewhere in the background of processing the slightly render texture so now we can say scope render dot material equals to this render texture material uh, we have a material as well as you can see material to apply texture
I'm not really material to apply texture because it's going to be always created somewhere in the background. That's the actual material that will be applied. So now, let's go before we actually assign it. Render texture dot render texture material dot main texture equals to the render texture, so that the material actually has the render texture as its texture. Okay. The scope render will now show us, I think, uh, the render textures texture basically. So set the camera style texture so that the camera actually gets or sets the texture, otherwise no point. Just gonna get a black screen then. So just assign it to render texture, the target texture of the render cam, and enable the camera as well. So it's true. Initialize the camera by setting the target texture and enabling it. Alright. Now if we hit play. Alright, we can aim and you can see that render texture is working. We have two audio listeners and we also can see some problems. First is that shadows are not good. Alright. So the first one we fix is going to be the problem of the render texture's quality. So you can see it's not that good. Uh, it's not that high quality, so I don't like that. The shadow problem is quite simple to fix. We'll fix that in a bit. Don't worry, so what we'll do first is going to just fix the text render texture quality. So let's make a space, a header, and render texture. So that's for the render texture. A float height, uh, 1024, and an int width, and sort of float really the height either, so just make it an int. Another int will depth, 24, save that, and just pass in the variable instead. Alright. Now we should be able to get something much better than previously. So let's clear this. Move the audio listener if we have not already. We'll still move it. So as you can see, we have much better quality. And yes, it is much better than previously. Alright, so now what we do is we have to change it to the perfect point. So before we do that, first we want to uh, define an enum. Well, not really, I think we don't need this. So, should we actually keep this or forget it? Let me think about this. Uh, no, I don't think we should keep it because uh, why should we even allow the user to choose that? Well, remove the update function as that's useless in this case. Move the audio distance from the camera scope renderer as that's not needing it. I'm going to set this to 512, 512, and depth of 24. It still gives a pretty okay result, but this shadow thing is really the big pain. So what if we turn off the shadows? Now that's not gonna help because turning off shadows would mean we're not cast on the ground either. And turning off shadows on the scope render or making it shadow only doesn't help because it does not actually cast any shadows anyway anywhere. It's actually the one being casted on to give this bad result. So as you can see I can make this more high quality as much as I want. Of course, it will affect performance. And that's become like super cool quality now, we can see. Alright, so now it's time to add some crosshairs. First of all, we need a crosshairs pack, which is perfect. A big jumbo crosshair pack. Duplicate the render and call it crosshair. It's still a cylinder. Create a new material and just assign it like this. Alright, disable and receive shadows on both the materials. On this one also, and on this one. And assign your desired crosshair uh, on the mesh renderer. Or rather, let's just have a look first. You'll see that these shadows are fixed, so. Oh, well, let me just make that okay first. Oh, the wrong one, wait a minute. Let me just assign the crosshair material. So, we have a crosshair now. And it's actually a material on top of a cylinder. We can put that somewhere there, save it, and if we hit play, you'll see it working pretty good. And as receive shadows is turned off through their materials, there is no shadows. And that has finished all our problems. Everything looks pretty good now. Uh, except this thing here. <laughs> uh, that's because we are not completely done with our, uh, what do we call that? The cast box setting completely, so. Uh, otherwise it would be okay so because then the camera would right away be able to you know turn off you know we can actually make the nail clipping really close and then it's oh it's ruined so 
making the year kid being so cool doesn't help either. Well, actually, I've changed that, so what we'll do is just set this to points two and keep that on 25. Add a layer and make it the muzzle or just the sniper layer to ignore. Ignore or it's the cool rendering ignore, okay. Assign that to the muzzle flash. So our muzzle flash is that. The camera should not render that. Good. Now it's a cheap trick, but it does work. As you'll see when I go and play. And just set that to that as well. Now we just want to put the camera slightly at the correct point. So that's where the bounce finish. As you can see with the camera. Shouldn't even give us to see that. So that's done. Now the target text is going to be automatically assigned through our script. And everything's going to work. So. Um, then let's see the visual so we can change the box cast. Or the box check, you can say, the size. You can see it's completely wrong. The predicted position is also wrong. So what we can do is just change the values here. So uh, make them where they look perfect. I'm going to change the click predictor position. Uh, scale the box card size. It does make things look easier. And it's done with that. New rotation can be minus 90 or lesser. Okay. Now here in the clip projector. We'll set it to position 2.11, 0.07, something which just makes it the best. We have a look at that. And as you can see, it does work. We have clipping working, clip happens, we are releasing the gun down. Perfect, now we can just make the clip as the aiming position here, yeah. just like the rest. We can just modify the X and others to what you prefer. And of course, I'm going to actually have to work on this to make it perfect, fine. I feel satisfied. Now let's add some Wignet. Duplicate the global volume. Uh, make Wignet volume effects. Uh, for that, create a new clone. Uh, Wignet volume profile. So we get a new instance of that. Change the intensity and smoothness. Now we're going to check that out in play mode. So let's go and have a look at how it looks. So let's just aim. And it's not looking perfect, so I'm going to have to fix these problems there. Making the density lower and the smoothness lower. As you can see, the scope has actually become much better. So everything was very set, as you can see, it because it uses the strictable object. And so, uh, out of play mode it auto saves because it has a scriptable profile down there you can see modifying that modifies the whole thing okay save our project and now we're just gonna drag this into scope mechanics and enabling and disabling it does that you can see Alright, so how do we handle the Wignet? We first use those rendering.universal and unity engine.rendering. So we have the height and depth, just set it to 512, 512, 24 by default. 
and we define the weapon we can delete it there's no need right now vignet effect volume we have a reference to that we have a private vignet for vignet effect we have a render texture and the coating as well uh, we actually do vignet effect volume dot profile we'll try get out vignet so it gives our vignet a reference to it and that function just does the same thing and then we have on aim and on aim exit just call the coroutines and stop it when needed so here we have the coroutine so elapsed time while elapsed time we add time and just uh, loop it so we need to null so we loop again otherwise we just end it and enable disable bliss on the input so here's how we're calling it so you can see cool up down we can have a look at region variables and region for variables we can make another region or first we can define our function initialize and just pass the initialize code there that's region general and the general region we got the general region now we have a new region this is big net effect and the region this is render texture and this region so we also end this one and that's done so we have the code done and as you can see I've added events through my weapon enable disable and event calling to the scope effect manager I've set these like this point to to aiming if I delay and to not aiming is zero both time is just point one so you can see it gives that smooth transition quite okay And we can shoot. So now I've made quite a lot of changes. As you can see, we've got these events. I'm making a new region for that. I'm making a new function. Um, we have to make a lot of changes, that's what I meant. So, uncheck for scope enable. Not only that, we also want to add a weapon reference. So last field prime weapon base weapon space and this is weapon. If weapon dots uh, gets or let me just see we have a function for that. On interaction is exposed. We can just make a for your new function dot so pool is current weapon. And we just return is called weapon. So here we can say is current weapon uh, true. If that is true, then we want to do render camera dot enable is false. Sorry, true. Otherwise, it is false. Just gonna call this on initialize. So when initialization, we should call it once. That's cool. Now we have this done. Assign the weapon base. And as you can see, if I shoot, put aim, it's working. So we have this duplicate test. So basically, we're going to interact with it. Uh, it should be turned off by default, the camera of it. Okay. And later on, it should be enabled when we swap it. So that's my target thing to do but of course it will not do that right away so we have the weapon let's just rotate and just put it here as testing and go and try to interact with it so let's go have a look cameras disabled which is good it's not showing anything in the render texture okay that means it's disabled the camera so if I swap it now press E I got the weapon and the render texture did not come up so the camera was not enabled. We need to add a new event. So on interaction, we call on check for scope on both of the weapons because yeah, and that's done. Now we can have E and the scope still is disabled. I'm not sure why that happened. That's because uh, that's because um, uh, if you see. Where do we invoke it? Yes, so first we should do the thing, then we should invoke it. That way, if we need to check anything, it's gonna all work. 
Okay, now it works. So let's come and sort of pick it up. And yes, you can see the rendering is closing and enabling. So right away, if I go and check this weapon that is on the slab here, it would be turned off. So if I swap it now, swap, or rather just check it, you can see that it's just not actually enabled. Let me just fix this first. It looks pretty big, too big. Now it's okay. This is our actual weapon, and if you see, the camera is enabled. What? Of course, because uh, when it is actually turned off, the event is on call. Uh, so we need to go and see the roots. So swap weapon occurs here. Set current weapon is called, as you can see right at the top. So we can use that function actually as our uh, helper. So Every time this is happening, after this current weapon, we can say else. Rather, why do we even need that? Yeah. We will say on interaction dot network. That kind of means we were just disabled, right? So interaction must have happened, so that's why I'm invoking it. Mm hmm And it's not working, is it? What happened here? Rather, we just don't want to use this thing anymore, so... I'm just going to uh, create a new script and call it Global Volume Instance. So it's gonna be a public, static, global volume instance inside it, and say instance. Then we have an awake function, instance equals this. And this is instance, this is set instance to this. We'll just add a function, public, or rather I don't need it. Just want to use rendering. So public volume, get volume, or get global volume ref. It's a ref. We want to do return, get component, volume. Now, remove that ref keyword, it's not needed. Comment that out to get the magnet effect, we use the global volume instance or instance to get global volume ref dot profile try get out magnet. And just require component type of volume. Save and get out. Here we are. And let's actually add an override. So now we can add bloom, which I mistakenly removed. So set the intensity in that to one. Add wignet. Set it to all, enable everything. Now we're done. We can actually delete this one. Before we do that, just paste the volume in here, change the color to white, and add a global volume instance to it. And nothing happens, as you can see. That's because we've never disabled for some reason. I'm um, not sure why. Maybe because we are disabling it somewhere. Let's try and let's see what happens. So it does not disable, disables afterwards. Maybe because we did not delete that. So let's actually have to turn off both of the volume because it's being overridden, right? The priority was more. So there were two weapons that I've seen and both of them had it. So that's why now it works, right? So we're going good. We'll just finish this off now. Deleting those that volumes which were not but that useful to us at least. So now save and done. Uh, delete this it's not needed that. As you can see, we got the colors done. Just going to add a CLS field, private for using cinema machine cinema machines, so cinema machine virtual camera. This is aiming virtual camera. And you might be wondering why, but I'll just show you. So in update, if aiming virtual camera dot game object dot active self is true, now this will kind of tell us okay it's aiming. Then override this way. 
so we want to like remove well, this way so that it actually shows the sway in the camera right now it's locked right so it actually is rotating with this way so it gives us an error and we cannot change the yield or angles of the local rotation i don't know why but it doesn't matter if that is so we just modify the direct rotation um, now that's because we need to modify it like this Catenion.eulder will work for us so what we'll do first is see what happens just by setting it we get a null reference exception just going to assign the wall the vignette effect and remove this volume variable don't save yet because I'm checking so you can see what being set to zero at all times here instead of setting it to identity which is zero we'll set the local addition to quaternion or not the inner angles because we can't do that a new quaternion no quaternion dot euler okay that's a pretty useful function uh, weapon dot transform dot local rotation dot euler angles dot x and for the y and for the for the y it's zero so then and for the other axis it's minus let me negate it not add it so you can see that it's quite good except that I don't think we need to do that for the up down one so just go in here and make that zero f so as you can see we do have this much better looking than before now let's just go into the script and make a vignette effect place again and this is had a vignette effect a serialized field private um, float intensity and private float smoothness set this one to 0.758 and 0.34 by default then in the vignette Dot smoothness dot value equals smoothness and intensity as well do those both and that's it yeah so now we should have the volume being overridden move that comment and let's continue and I just created a folder for this as well instance based now we can just go up to the weapon and we can see that we got the intensity and smoothness and changing those does actually affect directly so I'm back and I've actually made quite a few changes as you can see because I was trying to get it done with the other weapon and got some problems so you can see the first top two lines we return if it's not a current weapon and nothing else really at least in this update function I'm just gonna add a summary for this function. All initialization is done in this function. And if we come back out, I think everything else was the same. This is here what I did. So I added all the events, interaction, and the aim on exits. So as you can see, all of them are done. And then yes, I created a crosshair for it as well. You can see it has its own crosshair material as well. Actually, I created one, so let me just sign that one, as you can see in the Steelrock folder. All right, so let's make some changes. So almost done with this long video. Uh, yeah. So public bool is clipped. I'm just gonna return is clipped yeah that's all this functions has to do and then in the scope effect manager private bools aimed equals false is aiming basically okay then a comment on top of it for uh, aiming then we can go down and use that in this function so before we stop the coroutine or anything is aiming equals true Okay, and then 
would say is aiming is true. Just copy that and paste it here. It's false and this time it is is aiming is false. Yep. And we define an if it is aiming is true. So if is aiming is equal to true. If that is true and weapon dot we don't have that yet, so we cannot get a reference to player controller from the weapon. We'll have to make a simple function for that, which is gonna return the controller. So let's just scroll down to the end of the script. Just after setting, we can also get a supply controller. Say so get player. All right, we're just going to return controller. Get the player and dot is clipped is also false. Right now I will show you all the code changes as I was getting quite confused at why my solution wasn't working to a problem. But anyway, just do this and you shouldn't come into a problem. You can see all that code up there. And it's aiming through, that's already done. We return if the player is clipped on aim and on aim exit, so in both places. And then this is the same, just this up code you can see here. If it's aiming, it's in the all stuff that was confusing. I was yeah now in the inspector you can remove the events that enable and disable the aim virtual cam don't remove the events for the scope effect manager meaning there are two events that are actually called to the two unity events in the weapon based script you will see in the inspector so one of them is for enabling the aim virtual camera and disabling it you can just uh, select that it will get blue and then hit the minus button from the unity event on both so the aim exit and aim enter events because now our own scope effect manager does that but you must not remove the events that do call the scope effect managers on aim and on aim exit uh, that's that's yeah that's that's all you have to do now and you should be exactly the same as i've got and please consider subscribing like commenting and sharing see you in the next video